Good evening everyone. Today's reading is from John chapter 17 um, and I'm going to do this a little bit different tonight. Um, this is just an unbelievable reading and just really represents Jesus' heart for us. The fact he's about to go be betrayed and then he prays to God for his followers and his future followers blows my mind. Um, he's about to make the ultimate sacrifice yet he still is serving us by interceding for us in prayer. So I'm going to read from the Passion Translation tonight um, and as I'm reading this is a big chapter with so much in it just as well listen for one thing that you really needed to hear today. One thing that Jesus prays over us that you think I really needed to hear that he's praying for me for that right now. So it's John chapter 17 verses 1 to 26. This is what Jesus prayed as he looked up into heaven. Father, the time has come. Unveil the glorious splendour of your son so that I will magnify your glory. You've already given me authority over all people so that I may give the gift of eternal life to all those that you have given to me. Eternal life means to know and experience you as the only true God and to know and experience Jesus Christ as the son whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth by faithfully doing everything you've told me to do. So my father, restore me back to the glory that we shared together when we were face to face before the universe was created. Father, I have manifested who you really are and I've revealed you to the men and women that you gave to me. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have fastened your word firmly to their hearts. And now at last they know that everything I have is a gift from you and the very words you gave to me to speak I have passed on to them. They have received your words and carry them in their hearts. They are convinced that I have come from your presence and they have fully believed that you sent me to represent you. So with deep love, I pray for my disciples. I'm not asking on behalf of the unbelieving world, but for those who belong to you, those who you gave to me. For all who belong to me now belong to you and all who belong to you now belong to me as well and my glory is revealed through their surrendered lives. Holy Father, I am about to leave this world to return and be with you, but my disciples will remain here. So I ask that by the power of your name, protect each one of them that you've given me and watch over them so that they will be united as one, even as we are one. While I was with these that you have given me, I have kept them safe by your name that you've given me. Not one of them is lost except the one that was destined to be lost, so that the scripture would be fulfilled. But now I am returning to you, so Father, I pray that they will experience and enter into my joyous delight in you, so that it is fulfilled in them and overflows. I have given them your message, and that is why the unbelieving world hates them, for their allegiance is no longer to this world, because I am not of this world. I am not asking that you remove them from the world, but I ask that you guard their hearts from evil. For they no longer belong to this world any more than I do. Your word is truth, so make them holy by your truth. I have commissioned them to represent me, just as you commissioned me to represent you. And now I dedicate myself to them as a holy sacrifice so that they will live as fully dedicated to God and be made holy by your truth. And I ask not only for these disciples, but also for all those who will one day believe in me through their message. I pray for them all to be joined together as one, even as you and I, Father, are joined together as one. I pray for them to become one with us, so that the world will recognise that you sent me, for the very glory you've given to me, I have given them, so that they will be joined together as one and experience the same unity that we enjoy. You live fully in me and now I live fully in them, so that they will experience perfect unity. And the world will be convinced that you have sent me, for they will see that you love each of them with the same passionate love that you have for me. 
Father, I ask that you allow everyone that you have given to me to be with me where I am. Then they will see my full glory, the very splendour you have placed upon me, because you have loved me, even before the beginning of time. You are my righteous Father, but the believing world has never known you in the perfect way that I know you. And all those who believe in me also know that you have sent me. I have revealed to them who you are, and I will continue to make you even more real to them, so that they may experience the same endless love that you have for me. For your love will now live in them, even as I live in them. This passage really amazes me um, in Jesus' devotion to prayer for us, that he is going to be betrayed, but he prays that he will be glorified in the act on the cross. But also he prays for us as he departs from this world. And he prays that we will also glorify him through our lives. But I first want to dwell on just one thing because there's so much in this passage. There's a lot you can take from it. But I really want to talk tonight about the glory of God um, and how that's shown through Jesus. So it starts um, the first um, five verses. Jesus is praying to God as he is preparing to finish the Father's work. And he asks that God would unveil the glorious splendour of his Son. And this petition was not selfish. He wasn't saying, glorify me, God, make me great. He was saying it, not in a selfish way, but it was to ultimately glorify the Father. He was about to go to the cross, which in the world was a tool used to bring shame and humiliation. To show punishment but Jesus was about to turn that into a symbol of the glory of God and his power. How amazing is that? That something of this world was going to be completely turned to actually resemble something of beauty and grace and complete and other love. It's amazing. And one thing I really want to take from this passage for my own life as well is Jesus prays for us and prays that we will follow that example, that we will glorify God. And we're not used to hearing the way Jesus glorifies God by the cross and that act of complete mercy. We're not used to hearing that glorify yourself as a selfless thing. Christ's motive should be ours, Spurgeon says in this great quote. Spurgeon says, when you ask a blessing from God, ask that it may bring that it may glorify God by it. Do you pine to have your health back again? Be sure that you want to spend it for him. Do you desire temporal advancement? Desire it that you may promote his glory. Do you even long for growth and grace? Ask it only that you may glorify him. All the things we ask for, we should be asking it to be glorifying to God. And I wonder in our prayer lives if we actually do that. Are we asking for things because we want it for ourselves? Or are we asking it in humility and saying, God, you know better. And God, this is for you. And God, I want my health back. But let me, you know, rejoice when it comes back. Let me rejoice in you and give that to you. So Jesus' prayer for us is that we will glorify him and the Father through our lives. But some of the other things that I just want to dwell on that he prays. Um, for us, he prays for his disciples, first of all, and he says, with deep love, I pray for my disciples. And when he refers to that, he's not asking on behalf of the unbelieving world. He really wanted to specifically pray for his followers. He not, he's not saying he doesn't care about praying for the unbelieving world world but he really wants to pray for the strength of his followers and some of the prayers he prays that his glory would be revealed through their surrendered lives so that by the power of God's name that each one of them would be protected and watched over so that they will be united as one even as we are one he prays that they'll experience and enter into the into my joyous delight in you so that it is fulfilled in them and overflows. He prays that God will guard their hearts from evil, that they'll be made holy and sanctified by the truth. He prays that they'll join together as one. The world will recognise 
that God sent Jesus just through them, that they'll experience the same unity that God and Jesus enjoy. And that God would allow them to be in the same place where Jesus was in heaven. Jesus wants to share his glory with us. How amazing is that? How amazing is it that our God wants to share his glory with us and to shine for Jesus? And I love the message version because Jesus dwells on that we are in this world. We're not of this world, as he said before. And he's not asking for God to remove us from this world, but to guard us in this world from evil. And in the message, I love the way it puts this. It says, I gave them your word. The godless world hated them because of it, because they didn't join the world's ways, just as I didn't join the world's ways. I'm not asking that you take them out of the world, but that you guard them from the evil one. They are no more defined by the world than I am defined by the world. We are to reflect and glorify Jesus as he glorifies the Father on earth. What an amazing example of love and something that we really need at this time for us to glorify Jesus here on earth. And what does that look like to us? What does glorifying the Father actually look like? It's walking each day with him. That's what Christ calls us to do, to walk each day with him. And in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, Paul writes, But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image, from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. We are to know God, to walk with God and allow him to transform us into the same image of Christ, to glorify him and bring honour to his name. And that's what we are called to do on this earth. And that amazes me that we are called to that mission here on earth. And I want to challenge us each of us today are we sharing the glory with Jesus? Are we asking God, glorify us with you? Not just glorify me. Don't just make my ministry look great. Don't make me look good as a leader. Don't make me shine just to my followers because of me. But continually saying, am I glorifying Jesus? Is it all coming back to Jesus in everything I do, whether that's in work, getting on with colleagues, making um, getting promotions, whatever that is, are you coming back to Jesus and glorifying him and saying thank you Jesus? Or are you making it about you? In school, is it with exams, with everything going on? Or have you made it about you and what you can do? Or are you living to glorify Jesus? Maybe it's something you feel called to and you need to actually be challenged right now. Are you glorifying Jesus and stepping into that and being obedient to him and following what he says? Even if sometimes it makes you uncomfortable, it could maybe lead to suffering in a way. Jesus knew he was going to the cross, but he still asked God to glorify him. And I want to challenge us each today on how are we glorifying Jesus in our lives? How are we making him known? How are we devoting our lives to him? And that's just one thing to take from this passage. There's so much more. But even the prayers that he prays over us as he was interceding for us before he went to the cross. His prayer was for us to glorify him, for us to be protected in glorifying him, for us to be sanctified in truth so we could glorify him. And I love that, that that is our mission here on earth. And one of the songs that I always come back to to remember it's not about me but it's all about him and about giving him glory is yet not I but through Christ in me and I just want to pray some of those words over us today the night is dark but I am not forsaken for by my side the saviour he will stay I labour on in weakness and rejoicing for in my need his power is displayed to this I hold, my shepherd will defend me. Through the deepest valley he will lead. Oh, the night has been won and I shall overcome. Yet not I, 
but through Christ in me. Father, help us today to glorify you in all that we do. Let it not be about us, but all for you and your glory. Thank you that Jesus prayed for us right before he died on the cross for us. Lord, help us continually be transformed into a reflection of Jesus. Amen.